So, uh, so that's the story behind the play. Well, I'm, I, I'm not surprised. And, and, you know, old flags like that so often have an old story behind them because, of course, you know, to this day, they are the representation of whoever you're fighting for. And, you know, you protect the flag at all costs. You know, there's the, the whole Star Spangled, Spangled Banner thing, you know? But, um, good. Well, look, look, let's just have a nice little rock and rolling chat. I'll kind of kick it off and then we'll just, you know, go with the flow, Sandy, because I know that's your kind of your way and it's my way too. So that should be great. Um, Mr. Sandy Monroe, I must start this by saying I'm deeply disappointed that I've gone to the time and trouble to put my cowboy hat on, my sunglasses, because the last time I saw you on video, you, you've gone to the Tesla gig in Texas and you yep. went full Monty. You were I full did. cowboy. <laughs> I was now, had so I impressed. Known, had I known, I would have worn my, <laughs> uh, my skull shirt and uh, my cowboy hat uh, and, and the yep. glasses. And probably yeah. the last well, time you saw me was, uh, the last time you saw me, probably I was dancing with some other guy um, at, a, at a bar. Uh, believe it or not, they had a lot of drinks there. I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, yeah. I, I yeah. have heard, and, but what I did hear was what went on at that gig stayed at that gig, so you probably shouldn't say too much more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, luckily, I, I wasn't the guy who went to the, uh, uh, the hot tub and stuff like that, so... No, nah, yeah. uh, my wife was with me, so uh, she kept me in check most of the time. Anyway, yeah. Well, that that, that that's what they're for. They're, they're multi-purpose yeah. uh, things. Oh, Wives, yeah. I have always thought, uh, Sandy. You know, we're both men of the world. We're not kids anymore yeah. and stuff. But I've always thought of my wife. I've been married thirty-seven years as a Swiss Army knife. You know, yeah. there, there's there's always something that you can that they can do. You know, and yeah. and sometimes you think I didn't know that was there. You know, <laughs> and this yeah, little exactly. blade comes out. Um, right. So so listen, let's have a good rock and roll run through a few things. You and I have got a lot sure. in common, I think, over and above electric vehicles and the journey of you know whatever. Um, yeah. You were a musician, is that correct, Sandy? Back in the day, I, or whenever. Yeah, I used to sing. I sang in a couple of different bands. <laughs> Singing in churches. Actually, um, um, I used to make a ton of money on, um, it's tragic, but uh, old soldiers <laughs> and sailors that died uh, in Canada. Uh, it was very, very popular to sing Danny Boy. And, um, and so I would do that at, uh, at funerals. And for a while there, um, uh, you know, they, it was like every, um, every few days I was... Uh, get out of high school early, run down, sing at the, uh, one, of the <laughs> one of the local funeral homes and then, uh, and then on my way again. But, uh, but I sang, yeah, I used to sing a lot. I, I do it here every once in a while, but not, not so often anymore. Yeah, well, I, I got a couple of guitars in, in the office. I, I, I got, ah. um, I've got an acoustic and I've got a nice uh, old electric. So, you know, I, I, you, I'm, I'm envious already. You, you work in a facility. You run your own business. You've got yeah. a team. You know, you're very well known, uh, very well respected, of, of course. Um, but, but I'd like to welcome you into my office. To, to, you know, and have a little look around. I've got bits and pieces here and there. But, but yeah. I, I really should have called my company Billy No Mates Incorporated. <laughs> Because it's just it's just me. The reason yeah. why when I go when I go out on the road uh, and meet people that I'm a little bit in in your face, you know, I, I like the hat yeah. and all this stuff. Is I'm desperate for company. Um, it's the fact that I've been on my own. I'm sort of semi. I'm kind of in semi solitary confinement. Um, in the work that I've chosen to do, <laughs> um, which was a bit ah. silly, really, because I do like company, Sandy, and I guess you do too as well. Well, what part of Britain are you in? Well, I live right in the middle, slap bang in the middle near Silverstone Racetrack. So, oh, I know exactly uh, where that is. Well, you know exactly yeah. where it is. So I'm in, I'm in a town called Brackley, which uh, I suppose currently is, is extremely well known in motorsport circles because it's the home of Mercedes yeah. Formula One. Um, yeah. You know, other Formula One teams have been here. And this is kind of motorsport alley up and down from Silverstone down to Oxford down to Woking, yeah. you know, you've got McLaren, yeah. you've got Williams, you've got all these right. amazing companies, yeah. uh, Mercedes, etc. 
Um, so look, let, as I said, let's have a sort of run through. I've made a little list. I hope it's OK if I've made a list. This is a practice yeah. my wife has imbued in me to do because otherwise I don't know what the hell's going on. So I put yeah. Made in China 2025 strategy. I'd like to talk to you about that. Um, yep. Global oil uh, and gas companies influence on, on the world. Talk about that. Yeah. I'd like to talk about um, synthetic fuel. I'd like to talk about um, batteries versus charging infrastructure. Where's the kind of you know potential mm. mix between those <clears> things? <throat> I'd like to talk to you definitely about the F FT, Financial Times Future of the Car Summit, which I've kind of been at for the last four days. Um, and Elon was the star turn... Um, on Wednesday night, uh, he, he no Tuesday night. Uh, I yeah. met JB uh, briefly, and and that was honestly, I was I was starstruck. I won't deny it. I have over the years met lots of people. I don't normally get kind of you know overly awed by people, but I, I saw JB in the reception of the facility, uh, the building where the the gig was. And I'm like, oh, God, I've got to talk to him. But I had to kind of pluck up courage. Normally, I'm not shy in any regard. Um, I'd like to talk to you about Nobi or, or NOB cars. I know you know yeah. those guys. EVS 35 and anything else you want to talk about. So that's quite a list. Um, well, you also, so, didn't you also want to talk about Gibbs? Of course. Yeah, that's the other oh thing we've got God, in common. I've, you know what? Uh, there we go. So if, if it's not your wife telling you what to do, it's me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yes, yeah. Gibbs amphibians. So I went there. I I had I knew nothing about amphibious vehicles. To be yeah. frank with you, Sandy, you know, treat me gently because I only know very basic stuff about engineering. In truth, but I've surrounded by myself with engineers for the last twenty, thirty years, mm. and that's given me some mild degree of credibility somehow don't know how it's happened osmosis that's how it's happened exactly. a bit of osmosis um but yeah gibbs what what did you do there then or what was your involvement with them well uh when they first came uh when they first came to north america um they had heard about us and uh they sent their car they shipped their vehicle to our old facility and when it showed up uh, you know it, it didn't have a top it was filled with leaves and debris, okay? Um, it, was, it was a real mess. So we pulled it out, hosed it off, um, got it all ready for, you know, what we thought were going to be meetings to talk about us, you know, putting it into production and whatnot. But while we were doing it, we put it up on the hoist. We looked at, you know, how it worked and how things uh, retracted and what the wheels retract up inside and whatnot. And we had a lot of good ideas. So uh, it was supposed to be Monroe and Associates and Harbor. Now Harbor is one of the, they used to be, the leading um, source of uh, manufacturing information and consulting in North America. They were bought by uh, another company, a German company. And, uh, and uh, anyway, Ron Harbor, the, the owner, uh, and I looked over the vehicle and then we talked to all the people at Gibbs and it sounded all very well and good. And so, uh, uh, you know, we, we were getting started. We had given them a quote and things like that. And then they came back and said, oh, um, could you patch the car up? Um, we're um, we're going to give it to Magna to build. And it was like, what? After three months? Uh, so, uh, so anyway, uh, we gave it back to them. And uh, that was the end of that. So we never heard of anything, and we never heard anything back. Um, uh, we had given them a plan. We would have got that vehicle, um, because it's unique and whatnot, it, it would have had to have a few minor, basically minor changes. And we figured we could get it uh, being sold within uh, 18 months. One of the reasons that people come to us is because they need a product that that has to be up and running and 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 going in in really short period of time uh, and fmvss so, i guess and all, all of that stuff yeah everything yeah we 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 do a very good job at making things go very very quickly and because we've seen literally thousands of cars that we've taken to pieces and whatnot uh, we know pretty much anything and everything that's going to be able to help out a customer to get their product to market quickly and that's why we thought they came to us but in essence um, it disappeared, and quite frankly, 
I'm not even 100% sure whether it's even in the U.S. anymore. I know that... Well, uh, well, well, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I only went there as a consultant myself for, for six months in the UK to a facility they had in Nuneaton. And uh, yeah, it was astonishing. A guy called Neil Jenkins, who's quite yeah. a name in, in the car world. Right. And then Alan Gibbs, who's obviously name of the company. For anyone who yeah. doesn't know, this is high speed amphibious technology. Right. So it's yeah. stuff that they put into what they call the Gibbs Aquada that looked like a Lotus. I mean, ironically, like, yeah. you know, Tesla picking on Lotus. It looked it looked like a Lotus Elise, but you could drive it as easily on the water as you could on the road. I mean, it was <laughs> the first time I went in it. I'm thinking like, this isn't real. I'm either being filmed by, you know, for a James Bond movie or yeah. is it just a dream? Because yeah. honestly, yeah. spectacular thing. Um, okay, well, well, look, you know, that was that was a brief adventure for you, and and likewise for me. Um, yeah. And and one of the things, that, so I, I mentioned osmosis. I worked at Ricardo for four years. Now oh, yeah. I'll be truth. I'll be truthful with you. Uh, if I hadn't worked there, Sandy, I would have known next to nothing. I mean, not that I know much now, but that did give me a bit of a sheep dip into getting a grasp of some of the basics. But before that, I'd actually worked at a startup. I wonder if you knew about these guys, Modec, a company called Modec that made an electric delivery van in 2007. Five and a half ton gross vehicle weight. It started with a Zebra battery and then it had um, a, a LFP battery. Um, so sodium nickel chloride to begin with, yeah, and then, yeah. then LFP. Um, and this was something which little did we know at the time was pretty groundbreaking in truth. You know, 2007, yeah. eight, nine, having a full battery electric vehicle, we made about 420, I think. We sold a small bunch to FedEx, some to uh, UPS. It then turned into, and I won't go through the whole story, but it then turned into the Navistar E-Star. Perhaps you, you recognize yeah, that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the Modec, made, made by a bunch of really smart engineers, a tiny team. We had very little money, mm. and I don't know about you, but I, I found sometimes when you look at what goes on with startups and people, the more money and the more people they've got, and I guess this applies to some of the big OEMs, yeah the more slow they are, and often, the more they often fail to even do anything. Whereas if you're nimble, if the boss has got the name above the door, like in your operation, you get shit done. Am I right? In a hurry. Yeah, in a hurry. Yeah. And it'll be yeah. better than normal. So we have, um, we have a rule here about how many people we're going to hire based on... Um, based on you know how many jobs we've got going on and we don't lay off we don't lay off very it's very difficult to get fired here at monroe once you're in you're in for a long time uh, as a matter of fact yesterday we had uh, a retirement party and for a little dinky company for somebody to come along and say well he had 32 years here that's a long time so yeah uh, when bill, uh, bill sandy just to interrupt me. i like the sound of this have you got any jobs going at the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> I don't okay. know. We, but we do have a band here. Uh, that's the other thing. We've got maybe, I don't know, 15 guitar players, three or four drums. Uh, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Ah, an audition. Yeah, well, no, yeah. I, I won't, no, I'm not, I'm not going to plug it in. No, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I might damage the microphone on the computer. Uh, um, right, so you, you've got a Munro band. Uh, you, you don't sack anyone. Um, just for a quick segue on that. One of the disappointments at Ricardo, in my mind, was they did sack people. They did kind of hire and fire yeah. relative to work. And I think that was a great shame because um, th there was a lot about that company I loved, but there were a few things I really didn't like. And the some of the culture side of things w w was was what I didn't like. Um, but again, wow. forgive me for jumping around on a few things, but but yeah. I came to America with Ricardo once, and this is something in the kind of EV story I don't think a lot of people know or, or, or are so familiar with. Maybe, maybe they're just younger people. The A123 factory in Livonia was right. really America's first gigafactory, wasn't it? Uh, it giga battery factory, yeah, it was. And actually, we went to work for those guys so that they could push batteries out faster. Now, the tragedy was 
the timing was poor and things like that, but, uh, but um, yeah, we worked with them. We actually, uh, the guy that worked on that was Dave Warner, and, um, and uh, he actually identified how they could get 50% more batteries out with the equipment that they had in less space. So that's kind of like, we, we do both ends of the business. We work on the manufacturing side, we also work on the product design side. We have two specialized teams. And, uh, and actually, you mentioned uh, Ricardo. We, we, we've worked with Ricardo for eons. Uh, both in Britain, like uh, we were hired by BMW to work on the Mini uh, to try and turn Rover around, shine it up basically so they could sell it. Uh, so Land Rover, of course, went to, uh, went to Ford and, and whatnot. So I, we, we uh, in that time frame, um, we worked with uh, uh, Ricardo uh, quite a bit. Um, engine work mostly, but uh, yeah. engine, uh, engine is basically what they focus their attentions on, and we've had lots of successes with them. So, mm. yeah. Mm. Well, o o over the years, I am familiar with your work because I've seen tear down stuff you've done um, on yeah. on all sorts of cars, and I remember seeing one of the early tear downs you did, I think, on the Model S, um, which yeah. I was particularly impressed with, uh, and, and then of course since that time you know because that's that's quite a few years ago now isn't it it's yeah, it's extraordinary to think yeah. yeah it's extraordinary to think that you know that the model s has been around that that long um and i can remember i tell you something sandy at the time i can remember uh, and i'm not going to besmirch ricardo as a company but there were people there smart engineers etc who really turned their nose up at at, at tesla they weren't yeah. too impressed with the tech. And, and I'm thinking, because I'd been at an EV startup myself, this car is amazing. I love the look of it. It looked a little bit like, you know, um, a Quattroporte. I think it's, it's it, I, I love what it looked like. Um, I was lucky enough to drive in a number of the early ones when they came to the UK. And I was just blown away by right. it. I thought it right. was just epic. Um, and funnily enough, Elon and JB were apparently on the f for the first time, well, certainly in a while, on stage together. Um, yeah. e Elon had dialed in, and, but JB was there in London. But it was lovely hearing them talk about how did this thing begin. And there was a bizarre moment where Elon said, when he, when he was kind of hooking up after Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening and Ian Wright had sort of moved on, as it were, um, yeah. Someone, God knows why, had even talked to some barbecue company in Thailand about yeah, the bloody yeah. battery. Is that yeah. true? I mean, it is true because I heard him say it. Well, but it is true. What yeah. the hell? What, what's that about? Do you know about that story? Well, I I, I actually watched uh, the Elon interview. I uh, and um, and um, and JB. I, I watched that part. I didn't get a chance. Uh, to carve an hour out of my time is, is kind of tough. It, it means I just don't go to bed at, at a normal time or something. So I did watch that. I was enthralled. I could not walk away. I couldn't look away. I, I, I wanted to see everything. Now, when I heard that, I started laughing. And the reason for that <laughs> is because we actually have, one of our customers is a barbecue manufacturer. And, I, and I'm telling you, we helped them save so much money, it wasn't even funny. So we don't just work on cars. We work on everything. Outside, there's hot water tanks, refrigerators. Uh, there's, um, there's any number of vehicles and whatnot. But then there's people with coming up with inventions. Um, I mean, this is what keeps everybody busy and alive here. We got airplane seats. We got all kinds of stuff going on right now. But if you want to keep people um, on their toes, if you want to keep them, period, with engineers, and and uh, and Elon said this last night, or whenever I read, uh, I watched it. He said, um, "We've got people that want to work, that'll only work here if they can work on cars and rocket ships." Okay, we work on rocket ships <laughs> and we work on cars, and that's one of the reasons why people hang around because it's not the same old stuff every day, and we do yeah. the same thing as Elon Musk does. If if you want to work, you know. Uh, from home, well, that's fine. Work for somebody else. You're not going to get a job here. Oh, if you want to, you know, have that strict uh, eight to five kind of day or eight to four thirty or whatever it is, well, that's good, but not here. 
If you mm -hmm. are deadly interested in getting the job done, if you really love to be an engineer, well, this is the spot, but not. We, we are not a country club, that's for sure. We don't hire easy and we almost never fire. We, uh, well, you have to do something really bad in order to... Well, well do, do you know, all of what you've just described is mu music to my ears because certainly in my life, I think since I left Audi in 2000 and, and went to work for a startup, but Sandy, I didn't even know what, I didn't really know what a startup was. Um, yeah. I soon bloody found out, I can assure you. So I went to work for Virgin Cars and went to work for Richard Branson. And mm. suddenly from having the, what you just described, you know, these are the hours you go to work, you come home, etc. Suddenly it was, there is so much to do and you've got to do it. And, um, yeah. you know, all hands on deck. And, and I remember God, working certainly for the first six months, literally seven days a week because yeah. the work just had to get done. But the thing was, nobody questioned it. And then the other bit was because it was exciting and you wanted to make it a success. The adrenaline kicked in, the, yeah. the, you know, it, it's a bit I'm lucky what I do now. I do work hard. I spend a lot of time on my craft and I you know travel a lot and all that. But yeah. I don't mind because I love what I'm doing. And, and if I was being told what to do by someone and it was just iteration all the time, you know, right. I, I'm complete. I'm completely with you. What you described there about. And the other thing I'd just like to say is I think you've said something really important in particular, because I think cross pollination of ideas um, yeah. and knowledge and technologies, et cetera, is, is what hasn't happened enough in the auto industry. It, it's right. it's very it's very much a closed shop. Exactly. I, I, exactly right. You know, and, and I think, you know, whether it's stuff in from aviation or stuff from marine or all these different things that, that come together. Um, uh, this is fascinating. So so like I say, I know who Munro Associates are. You have a longstanding respect. Uh, I think now not just in the auto industry, as you describe, you know, stuff outside of, of all that. Um, but but let's get into a couple of meat and potato things. Sure. I think you and I share a very similar view, which is a sadness, a frustration, and probably a borderline anger that Made in China 2025 was scoped, published, and has now been delivered for the past many years, whilst Europe and America just nodded off in an armchair. Oh and no, oh no, they made a conscious decision. This is why I have a real problem with MBAs. They made a conscious decision and they said, hey, it's 2015. Oh, 2025, that's 10 years from now. I'll be retired, I'll be in another job. How do we make some big bucks? I got it, let's make our products in China. Let's give away our technology. Doesn't mean anything to us, we're finance guys. We're gonna go and get big bucks. We're gonna get huge bonuses. They did it. You know what? Hang on a second. I'm going to show you something. <clears throat> no, look, I, I, I'm, I'm glad I've lit your fuse. That was ah. part of my cunning plan, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did well. You did well. Thank you. Here you what go. What you got there? I used to teach this stuff, but not anymore. This oh, right, right here. Of course. And okay. this, is, this is ancient. This isn't and, 20 years and, ago. But you know what? You give a businessman um, his calculator and, uh, and a real sharp pencil, and I'll put him up against a warrior, and I know who's going to win every time. Yep. If you run into the Chinese or anybody from the Orient, and you decide you're going to have a war, a business war, because in Japanese, uh, the word for businessman means, means a business warrior. Or, or financial warrior, okay? These guys are way, and it can beat anybody, anybody, if I follow the rules here, as opposed to, well, how much are we gonna make next quarter? Go ahead, mm. do that. Give away the farm. Do you know how many engineers slave over some new design, some new technology, some new material? Have it given away by some doughhead who doesn't know squat. I've watched it happen so many times. 
so many incredible ideas went down the rat hole because mm. we might, because oh if we do that we can uh, get a free lunch i'll get some i'll get some kind of a prize from uh, from these guys in china are you shitting me you can't believe how many things have gone down the rat hole and when i heard about uh the the 2025 china 2025 I, I didn't know about it until probably somewhere around uh, 2017, 16, 17. And why is that? Well, because I couldn't get a job uh, training people on how to design for cars here in the, U, in the, in the, in the U.S. It just, they don't go over was, there. But you know what? They came and found me. They paid me so much money, I could not believe it. I could not say no. And we had our whole teams over there. I literally would spend three months a year in China. I came back and talked to, I know a lot of high ranking people. I talked to the people here in the US in the auto industry, and I'm not gonna mention the names, but um, actually more than the US. I, uh, I have a lot of contacts in Germany as well. And I talked to them about what's going on. I said, hey, you know, these guys, they're sucking it up. There's Three, four hundred, three or four hundred was the most I ever taught at a single setting. The, they got this gigantic room, hundreds of engineers, hundreds of engineers sitting in there soaking this up like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, it was unreal, unbelievable. It, it, it is unreal, Sandy. I, and just to connect up a little bit of what we spoke about earlier. So when A123 gets into trouble, who buys them? The Chinese. And you, and you kind of think, am I, am I kind of, did I, did that really happen? And, and here's my thought on it, very simply. I sadly think, and we're both guys of a certain age, you know, you've got a couple of years on me. Um, mm. but, but I think over the last 30, 40 years, we have seen in Europe and the West, uh, a progressive decline in the quality and intellect of our political so-called elite whilst in Asia, it's gone in the other direction. Exactly. They've got smarter and cleverer. Yeah. So exactly. whether they're the leading politicians, whether they're the people in civil service, etc. And I'm sorry to say this as like, you know, a generalization, because of course, there are yeah. really wonderful people in and around everything you could argue. But overall, what we what we've seen it, the intellectual capital in making decisions. And when people say, oh, it's because it's command and control, because they're communist, because that is so pig ignorant. You know, the bottom right. line in this is they're intelligent. They're more intelligent. And the tragedy, certainly for America, is that the land of opportunity, the land of the free, the land of the entrepreneur has been wrapped and stifled and wrapped up in you know, red tape and all sorts of other bullshit, quite frankly. It's, and it's then more than the it. it's degrading. cherry on the cake. But the cherry on the cake, Sandy, is the guy who comes along who's like a, a reincarnation of Thomas Edison or Henry Ford or whoever, whichever one else you want to pick. He then gets almost denigrated by the establishment as yeah. being some kind of jumped up twerp rather than being the actual visionary that he is. We know exactly who we're talking about. You Absolutely. sat next to him and had a chat. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How did that come about? Elon came to see you and I, no, I watched no, that in uh, Wrapped. Yeah. Okay, so he didn't come to see me. Um, oh, okay. His secretary phoned us up and we were in Eugene, Oregon. Okay, here. Way, well, right. whatever. A long ways from, I got to get back into the center of this thing. I, I keep getting run around, but way out in, in Washington state and as close to the Canadian border as you can get and still be, you know, uh, and still be in the U S not when and, actually Washington, was it by any chance? Uh, no, Eugene, Oregon. It was uh, a little okay, Oregon. Sorry. So anyway, okay, yeah. so anyway, we're up there and we're going to do cold weather testing in our model three or model Y. So we're going to cut across the uh, northern uh, states, right? And this guy comes, or this lady phones up and she says, oh, um, would you like to interview with Elon Musk? Would I? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Where is he? Oh, he's in Brownsville, Texas. So we're going from way up here to as far south as you can get and still be in the United States, continental U.S. 
It's yeah. a long drive. We did it in a day and a half. I bet in you a did. day and a half. Oh yeah, we did. I'm telling I you what, you Corey did. and I were driving like there was no tomorrow. So we went down there <laughs> and we, we drove in and, um, and uh, we, we checked into a hotel and <clears throat> we got a couple, three hours of sleep. Didn't bother, <laughs> no shaving, uh, no washing, no nothing. I just jump in a car and then we drive to, uh, to SpaceX because that's where SpaceX is. Drive in and, and we're about 10 minutes early for our appointment. And uh, so we're sitting there and then the phone rings and a lady uh, comes on, the, the lady who uh, is his secretary. And she says, um, hey, um, uh, Elon's a little busy. Uh, would, you, uh, would you like to go through SpaceX? Are you kidding me? Oh uh, yeah, that would be good. We'll we'll take that. So oh, wow. we get we get yeah. uh, we get in the gate. Okay, we go into the gate and there's a there's a a guard there. He said, "Are you uh, Sandy and Corey?" Yeah. Oh, come on in. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh wow. So so then we go around and I've worked on plenty of rocket ships. Um, I worked on them for Boeing. I worked on them for McDonnell Douglas. I worked on them for Laurel. I worked on them for Lockheed Martin. I've been on lots of projects like that. I walk around every idea we ever came up with and ask them to implement that was rejected was on one of their ships. Their ships are put, they can put them together so fast it ain't even funny. And they're a hundred percent stronger. You can't weld. Why? Why can't we weld? Well, because it says right here, the FAA says you can't weld. It's a one shot deal. What are you kidding? Are you kidding me? This is going to go up in, mm. in, in the air and then it's going to fall down. No, no, we can't do that. We have to have rivets. We have to have, are you kidding me? All this other stuff. No, you can't use that. Can't use this. He was using all that stuff. Stainless steel everywhere. I mean, it was phenomenal. We looked at that thing. I mean, salivating. We were all drooling. We couldn't, I bet you I couldn't were. have been oh, more excited. Man. Oh man, it was, it was like the best. Then, um, uh, it comes up and she says, um, okay, uh, Elon will see you now. So came in and, um, and, um, Elon was in the room and he says, oh, I just want to talk to Sandy for about a 20 minutes. It was about a half an hour, just shooting the shit. You know, how do you think of this? What do you think of that? No, I watched it. Outside. Oh, man. Oh, no, no, it. this is, this one wasn't, this wasn't, this wasn't videotaped. So oh, then okay. we get in. Yeah. So then we... <laughs> So then we get, to, we get to the videotaping, right? So everything we do is, is on a cell phone. I, we use Apple phones. That's it. Yes. That's our, that's yeah. our, yeah. That's our so do filming I. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. exactly the same. So, yep. So Corey comes in with a little teeny tripod and, um, and he sets it up <laughs> and uh, he gives uh, both of us a, a microphone. And Elon's looking around. He says, that's it? That, that's all you got? And yeah. I said, yeah, it works really well for us. We're a low budget kind of place. I, why should I have more than I need? And then he starts talking. But he says, normally they come in with, with all these TV cameras that look like, uh, yeah. you know, the size of a dog house. It's just amazing. So, and, and then when we had the interview, it was just spectacular. And then after the interview, okay, we turned it off. And uh, Corey's snapping up the stuff to get us out because we think that he, because we know that he's got something going on. And he turns around and he says, oh, we're going to have a design review on the, uh, on the Falcon rocket. Um, you know, would you like to hang around? You might, you know, maybe it's an idea or something. Uh, yeah. So we hung around for until 1030 at night. Now I'm really exhausted. I couldn't, I couldn't even see straight. And they were talking about a problem that they had. And I didn't want to interrupt because, quite frankly, I knew who the dumbest guy in the room was, and it was me. Uh, but I did have <laughs> one idea that, uh, that could help him out. I'm a t I'm, it's a manufacturing technique that we've used in the past. So I went up and I said, uh, Corey and I got to scoot, but um, have you ever thought of using uh, uh, hydroforming was the, was the term mm. and blah, blah, blah. I talked about it a little bit. And Elon says, oh, yeah, why, why don't... And they started on to another conversation and then Corey and I buggered off. But I mean, <laughs> this guy is wicked smart and humble. Okay, so when we were in there, he made a suggestion, uh, some sort of a suggestion that was over my head. And the guy said, oh, come on, Elon. And then he says, you know, and then he rattles off this formula that if I ever took it in school, 
uh, I've forgotten it. And, but my guess is that, um, that it was over my head uh, from even when I was in my 20s. So then Elon says, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Well, what, do, what have you got? And, and I mean, try that. I, I've, been, I've been in industry for 50 years, okay? I've met lots of CEOs. Know how many CEOs I ever saw in a design review? None. You got it. The big Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And well, yet well, he was well, there. And giving well, suggestions and participating solid. Yeah. Well, Where well, do you find this somebody is, like that? I mean... I, I, I don't know. And, and both, certainly JB, especially JB and Elon, I, I approached JB at this thing yesterday, in London this week. And I simply said to him, look, can I just say, I know who you are. I know what you've done. And I just want to come up and say thank you to you because I know the personal sacrifice you will have made on this journey to do what you've done. I said, and now, I said, I guess you've got a bubble or two, JB. I said, but there you are starting up, you know, a company with this wonderful ambition that you've got. You don't need to be doing that. You're doing it because you care. So I just wanted to say thank you for your endeavor and your passion and your example, I said, because you've been an inspiration to me and probably many more people that you'll ever meet. But I wanted you to know that. And it was really nice. He just he said, oh, wow, thanks very much. I said, well, credit where it's due. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the, and this is, again, go, go back to this China thing, Europe, America thing, the last 30, 40 years thing. How can he be so blatantly and rudely ignored by even the political elite. And, and don't get me started on GM's Mary Barra saying they're going to be in the lead or they are in the lead of EV. I'm like putting my head in my hands thinking, have I like been asleep? Have I like had an accident and been bashed in the head and I've got all confused because I can't, this can't really be being said, you know, and why he's not at the heart of this ambition to reshore, you know, re reinvigorate the supply chain and yada, yada, yada. I mean, right. it's just bonkers, <clears throat> bloody bonkers well, in the extreme. The you, you, you mentioned that there was a lot of, a lot of things that uh, seemed to degrade um, our ability to, uh, to have the entrepreneurial skills and whatnot. I, I will tell you that um, if you're an engineer, um, you're not going to get a date. Women don't want to go out with you. What the hell? Are you kidding me? They'd rather go out with a basketball star or uh, maybe the drummer in a band. I don't know. But they're not going to go out with you. Why is that? The reason is really, really simple. You have no credibility. You have no credit. You're just an engineer. Engineers, they, they drive trains and they sweep up after people and on and on and on. Engineers are big nothing, a big nothing. If you see if you see somebody in finance or whatever, if you see somebody with that kind of talent or whatever, well, guess what? Um, they they've got they've got letters after their name or the first uh, like a medical doctor or something like that. Uh, they've got capital something or other, right? Ever yeah. see you ever see when engineers are are introduced? Engineers always smell, always spelt here in the States anyways with a small e because it's really nothing. Yeah. I mean, anybody yeah. can do that. It's not like you're a, you're a movie star or something. That's number one. That's one thing he's got against. So it's a, a cultural thing, ultimate. a cultural thing. Yeah. That's one. The second thing is he is not from an Ivy League school. He's not a member of the club. He's not a, mm. now in Britain, I found out the hard way about the old school tie. Um, okay. Yep. So when I was working with BMW, I had, uh, some far reaching kind of, uh, um, I was in contact with uh, Dr. Reitzler. And, um, and so when I saw something that was really wrong, um, I contacted him and somehow people disappeared. It, it, and it's a lot tougher when you've got three guys that have got the same tie on. That really was a killer. Well, everybody thinks that in Britain it's kind of unique, but it's not. It's not. These guys no. know each other by some secret handshake or some damn thing. Yeah, no. And Elon Musk doesn't have it. 
He doesn't. Uh, ha I'm, they hate his guts because he's making money that they should be making. He's not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to be getting that money. How you get got there? Oh, that's got it. that's. I have peasants to do that kind of stuff. So got, got it. Well, 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 what look. the hell's in his tea? Did you guys put? <laughs> you guys have <laughs> I put some extra juice in here, and uh, and now I'm going crazy. But but let, let me tell you something, if I may. So I used yeah. to be kind of a musician. I used to get up on the stage and sing and, and do bits and pieces yeah. like that. But then for most of the time, I've been in the auto industry. And I'm not just making this stuff up. Um, uh, I like engineers and I like engineering and I like designers. Um, I wish I was one. Um, and, and I've made it my mission in life, certainly these last seven years when I run my own ship, you know, doing my own thing, to... Yeah as best I can, present the engineer and engineering as being the new rock and roll, as being cool, as being all of those things. Why? Because these are people, and I love this about engineers, it's what do engineers like more than anything else? You know the answer to this question. What does an engineer love? Create. A problem. To create something Loves new. a problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, loves a problem. This create doesn't work. Or whatever. Yeah. 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 Make this work. Make this better. Make right. this whatever. Yeah. Now, to me, um, my dad was a carpenter and joiner. And so he was a craftsman. He was, you know, an engineer yeah. with wood, you could say. But nonetheless, he, he, he made something. He crafted things. So when I end up after being in the music thing and then getting into mostly sales and marketing jobs in, in the auto industry, I'll be honest with you. I used to feel a bit guilty when my old man used to say to me, tell me what you do again, son. And I'd tell him and tell me how much money you make. And I'd tell him and he'd say, wow, that's amazing. Well done. But I'd actually feel a bit embarrassed because I'd kind of think what I'm actually doing compared to what my dad can do with a piece of wood. But society valued him like 30, 50, 70 percent less than me in financial right. terms. And, yeah. and so I suppose over time and certainly, like I say, the stuff I do on LinkedIn, the storytelling, the way I try and present things is my way of trying to elevate the status of engineers and engineering. Because if anyone's going to sort this shit out we've got in terms of climate change and all of these challenges, it ain't going to be rock stars. It's not going to be basketball players and it certainly won't be politicians. It will be engineers. Right. Uh, so, you know, I suppose to, to not well, this is going to sound over the top, but, you know, if anyone's going to save my life, our lives, you know, humanity and life on Earth, it's engineers. So it doesn't seem a bad idea to elevate their status to me. Um, well, I, well, you know, you know, here's the thing. So I went to China for quite a bit and um, and um, and, you know, I, I was presented as an engineer. An engineer in China is a big deal. Hmm. It's a really big deal. They, yeah. you're revered. People who are in politics and whatnot, they're kind of looked at as uh, they've got a job to do and someone has to do it. But really and truly, they're not, they're not engineers. Doctors, uh, doctors and engineers, like doctors as in medical doctors and engineers, they get paid about the same amount. It's a whole different ball game because hmm. their culture is focused on progress, the future. How are we going to get to we to, to how are we going to get to the 2025 that they're talking about? Is that going to come as a result of playing ping pong or one of the uh, one of the other things that the Chinese do so marvelously well on TV? No, <laughs> no, it ain't. No, it's not going to work that way at all. And by the way, there was one thing that stuck out to me um, in that um, in that uh, FT or the Financial Times uh, mm -hmm. uh, presentation when I was looking at. Elon Musk. And that was how many times the moderator stumbled. This is a guy that's supposed to be in charge of electrical electric cars. And he said, oh, LFP batteries can't be uh, can't be uh, recycled. Recycled. Yeah. Yeah. Are oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Who is this yeah. guy? He's yeah. An analyst. Someone told him that and he believed it. OK. And, and yeah. there wasn't there was like a half a dozen of these things. And Elon Musk said, no, that's not true. No, I'm sorry, that's not correct at all. No, I think you've got something wrong there. Very polite. I would have probably uh, either rolled my eyes or said, you yeah. know what, time's up, I'm out of here. I mean, yeah, well, that's, that's, 
No, no, that's that's great observation. But 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 again, that politeness and courtesy again, you don't see yeah. that in in the majority of business leaders at that level. There are a few. I mean, I'm I'm not going to shout them out because I don't want to sound like I'm sucking up to them. But there are one or two that I encounter from time to time who do listen who clearly have the respect of their teams, but they're mm. few and far between. Most of them, let me be really blunt with you, because I know, I, I know of them and know some of them, they're bullies. Uh, and yeah. all they do, they've, 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 they've ro- risen to this point in their business and in, in, in the industry, and they basically you know, pick the people that are sycophantic to what they want, uh, and, and they don't get people who are contrarians, who challenge them, etc. They're just... Yeah. Plain and simple old bullies. Um, right. I mean, Elon, Elon's no pussycat for sure. You know, if you're going to work no. with Elon Musk, you're going to get like occasionally, to be blunt, as, I'm, as I understand it, pretty bloody brutalized. But that's because you're not getting your shit together and you're not fully committed. And, you know, if you're going to be in that sort of environment with those sort of people, um, it, it, it's it's all for the right reason. It, it's I wouldn't say it's like the ends justifies the means because you shouldn't you shouldn't be horrible to anyone really if you're half decent mm. person. But but I, I suppose you, you 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 know what I mean. Listen, I'd like to talk for another three hours to you, but I I'm not yeah. going to because I want to save up some of what we're going to talk about for other times as well. But I I would like to kind of spend the last five or ten minutes sort of just kind of trying to reconcile. Both of us can be critical about things, people, mm. all sorts mm. of things, you know, as observers. But mm. but what I have some thoughts. What are your thoughts on what we can do about it? What should the auto industry now be doing, in your opinion, Sandy? And what should the country and, if you like, make it really big, the world be doing right now to get ourselves out of the crap? You're an engineer. How do we solve mm. it? Okay, so that's a lot of points. So let me let me start at the <laughs> bottom of the heap. So if we're looking at what could the auto industries do uh, to get us moving faster and get us moving, like you say, out of the out of the ditch, um, the number one thing would be collaboration that we can't do right now or don't want to do. As far as I'm concerned, I've tried everybody's um, autopilot, whatever you want to call it, self-driving. There's only one that I, I would recommend, and that's what Tesla has. Tesla, we should beg Elon Musk to allow everybody to use that and then progress it up, give them source code, whatever they need to, to progress it up because, quite frankly, we can save tens of thousands of lives if we can do that one little thing. Secondly, I, I don't know how much you've driven your... I assume you have an electric car? Yeah, I've got a Jaguar I-Pace. Okay, so you have a Jaguar I-Pace. How easy was it to connect up to find... Uh, well, in Britain, it's a little bit closer <laughs> together, but, but oh, I know connecting what you're up say. To, get, to, get to, to get the juice you need. I mean, uh, really, around here, there's a whole bunch of uh, stations. Some work, some don't. Electrify America did not work on the VW i4 that we, or the, yeah, uh, uh, ID4. Uh, ID4, I, yeah. I, I couldn't get the damn thing to work. I had the, I had the, uh, the, uh, the app, I had this, I had that, couldn't work. Tesla's work so much easier, and it's a smaller package. Why, why, why don't we just get what these got, and it, it's, it works well. I mean, so that's basically, a, those are things that could be done to share. You move up a little bit to, you know, people that could get along. Um, of all of the, of all the CEOs that I've met, um, and I've met pretty much everybody's, there's only two that I, I think um, could possibly work, and one of them I haven't met. So Dietz from VW, um, I think he's, uh, that's a man that someday is, I don't know, they'll find him in a ditch or something. His people mm. hate his guts. The union hates his guts. Everybody wants to go back to the good old way of, uh, of making, you know, uh, petrol cars or, or diesel cars. Um, but that's one guy. Any other guy, 
that I think is, uh, is, and I have met him a couple of times, and I've seen him in action with, with common folk, and that would be uh, Jim Farley from Ford. Of those two, the rest, I mean, um, they can't be saved. Now, if you want to look at the top level, okay, what we need to do is get a whole bunch of these um, leaders or, um, or politicians or whatever you want to call them. They need to get a hold of, um, of China 2025 and read it over. Yeah, yeah. And seriously implement what these guys are doing. You cannot, you can't, you can't, fight machine guns with a spear they need to get this book okay and yeah, i only recommend yeah. one thomas cleary's edition english guy too eh so thomas cleary's <laughs> edition all you have to do is read the first 40 some pages the rest of it's too hard but if you look in here this is how i used to teach i used to go through page by page with with people that i mean we annihilated companies when I was doing this and using our, we have a lean design program that we, uh, we uh, apply, to, um, apply to products. And when we had this and this, no MBA company had a chance. Well, None. well, l listen, all of that I think is sound advice and I concur with it. There would be a few exceptions to people that I've met um, in some of the established o OEMs that, that uh, I do have a bit of time and, and, and respect for. But another book, are you familiar with Jim Collins's Good to Great? Yes. Yeah. So, so that book I like um, because to me, the core takeaway from that book was, um, and, you know, be brave, anticipate change, don't you know, don't listen to people, you know, some of the examples of those companies that progressed, you know, even against the odds. I, I, I'm not saying it's an absolute Bible, but what I'm saying is the core principle in it, um, which is about be bold, anticipate the future, you know, it, it, and, and don't spend all your time listening to so-called experts that've got no skin in the game. You know, having mm. skin in the game is, is key. But back to, to kind of your answers to, to my question, um, yeah, I, I, I do fear for where we are now because you go into supply chain, take the supply chain mess we've got now with battery supply. So here's the scenario. Just at the point we make legislation and public opinion move in the direction of accepting and buying electric vehicles. Great. Good news. Who can supply the electric vehicles? The Chinese. Why? They're the only ones that can make the batteries. CATL makes a third, as you know, of the battery cells on the planet. And it's right. only getting stronger and bigger. And the, here's another thing, just as a sort of concluding thought. I have in my mind something that's about to happen, probably even in the next 12 months. For all of the companies that are progressing solid state batteries, and I won't go through the list, there's a few significant ones in America and a couple in Europe. Um, I think already, whether it's CATL or maybe then over into uh, other countries, Samsung or Panasonic, etc. No, BYD I think, is the one you want to watch. BYD. Well, okay, BY, BYD even more then. You're, you're, you're right, because, you know, Chairman Wang is very clever. I think he's a chemist as well, isn't he? I think he's he got exactly, exactly the right background. Um, I think they will have all of this waiting in the wings ready anyway. So, and, and they'll probably just preempt anything that we're gonna cook up and come out with. Um, and, and I was listening to some battery experts um, on, and battery commentators uh, on the FT thing. I, it, today was all about that actually. And I, I thought that was fascinating. Mm. But, but Sandy, honestly, I'm frustrated now because I have to go because someone's coming to do something in the house and, and otherwise I'd, I'd yeah. want to keep talking and recording. But could we do this again sometime? Because there's loads that we were yeah. going to talk about and haven't. Um, I really yeah. like you because you, there's two things about you I particularly like. One, by just because you've been around a lot, you've seen, you've seen a bunch of stuff and there are too many people who think they know what they're talking about after five years of nothing. Um, so you have the maturity and the experience. The other thing is you call it out. You say it for what it is. You know, you're the boss yeah. of your company, so you kind of can. I'm the boss of my company. If I have, if anyone's going to get fired, I'll have to fire myself. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, I found this the most liberating period of my life because I'm not fearful of, of saying something that will get me sacked. 
Um, but, you know, and, see, and, here's here's the thing. When when uh, when I was working at Ford, um, okay, I came from the machine tool world initially. Uh, when I was 30, I joined Ford, and when I came to Ford, um, one of the uh, one of the guys um, that I worked for, he said, um, "How is it that uh, that that uh, that you can uh, come in here and um, and make these suggestions and um, butt in when everybody else is terrified?" And I said, and I meant it, and I still mean it. I come to work every day prepared to be fired. If you don't have that attitude, you're useless. And I try and project that to the people at my company. I use that term, come to work every day prepared to be fired. Not because you're doing a lousy job, but because mm -hmm. you're telling the truth. Because you're an entrepreneur. And that's the first rule of being an entrepreneur come to work every day prepared to fail because mm -hmm. failure mm -hmm. is your, that, that is the pathway to success. If you don't fail a few times, if you, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't tried things, if you haven't stretched out enough, what's that adage about, um, you know, come to the edge um, and, uh, and then the, uh, the bird hops over and then a mother bird gives it a kick over the edge and that's how yeah. you learn how to fly. You got to right? fly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, man, so. I've been on my ass more than once, I can assure you. You know, yeah. I, I've been right on the floor um, in more ways than I'd like to talk about. But but Sandy, I think that's a great final kind of uh, wrap up for, for th this session. As I say, I, I, I think we've got, you know, we're on a similar wavelength, but, yeah. you know, there's no point being an echo chamber, no point me just agreeing with you or you with me. I mean, again, to your point about, you know, getting things done. A bit of conflict, a bit of rubbing together, a little bit of you know challenge. Well, a lot of challenge is how anything good happens. You know, everyone's mm. sitting around agreeing with each other. I hear too many of these panels online where everyone says, "That's a good question," or "Oh, I agree with everything you just said." I'm thinking, "Oh God," yeah. you know, yeah. uh, not for the sake of it, have an argument, but put people on there who are going to challenge each other and say, "Mate, that's a complete, that's total bullshit." You know, you want that because. Yeah, it's a challenge. But Sandy, thank you so much for just this oh, initial occasion. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I, I hope people follow much more what you know Munro and Associates do because you do you do do a great job. I'm not blowing smoke up your whatever. Um, and in particular, I like you because you've got the Union Jack there right in the picture, and 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 that's just yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, I put that up just for you, actually. <laughs> you, you did. I know you did. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't put uh, stars and stripes up behind me now. I feel bad. Uh, but no. Um, but no, obviously, you've got that British DNA. A name like Sandy Monroe definitely says where you're from. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so listen, uh, good luck, my friend. Keep keep well, doing, you. keep keeping on, you know. And uh, yeah. I look forward to talking to you again. Are you coming to Europe, by the way, for the EVS yeah. 35 event in Norway? Yeah, I am. I yes, am going to be good. in Norway, but I'm not going to be hanging around for a long time because I'm going to Britain. Um, I, I, the, the show was initially I was supposed to speak there and then they, they put me out. Uh, they got some other professor in. So, uh, okay. so I'm, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be in Norway for a little bit, but then I'm, yep. uh, I'm headed back to, I'm going to go to Britain and then I'm taking off for home. I'm yeah. going to see you in either Oslo then or London for sure, without yeah. a doubt. I'd love to meet up and shake your hand and thank you for all that you've done. So that, that would ah. be cool. Great. Great. Sandy Monroe, okay. thank you for your time. We will see you again soon. So cheers. Yes. And thank you, Roger. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you.